Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, Retina Specialist in Marashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. In the previous presentation, I discussed the posterior vitreous separation, vitreous macular traction, and hyperatinal membrane. In this presentation, I will discuss vitreous macular interface abnormalities, including lamellar hole, full thickness macular hole, retinal detachment, and vitreous papillary abnormalities. Lamellar hole have a lamellar defect in the form of irregular thinning of the outer nuclear layer with the cleavage or schisis between the inner and outer retinal tissues. The lamellar hole is usually occurring due to a vulsion of the cystic roof caused by an uncontrolled edematous process, vitromacular traction or tangential traction by an epiretinal membrane, which appears as hyperreflective band causing corrugation of inner retinal layers. In contrast, can be presented in medium reflectivity and not induce any traction. Lamellar holes secondary to vitreal macular abnormalities have two ways to progress. The first is due to vitreal macular traction. Indeed, it will cause an intraretinal tubular cystic changes forming schisis between the outer plexiform and outer nuclear layer in a mustache appearance with a relatively intact ellipsoid zone. The wider the inner edges of the lamellar hole, the more thinning will be. Hence, the schisis itself will cause a relative scotoma. However, in severe cases, there would be a small cystic formation in the level of the inner plexiform layer. The other form of lamellar hole related to traction is usually caused by the epiretinal membrane leading to degenerative cavitation forming cleavage of the inner retina leaving a lamellar defect similar to top hat. The wider the inner edges of the lamellar hole, the more thinning it will be. In contrast to the schisis type, the ellipsoid zone in the degenerative type is usually disrupted and explains the reduction of vision. Some cases of lamellar hole presented with pseudo-operculum. OCT scan is the gold standard to diagnose a full thickness macular hole, which is very sensitive. OCT shows any associated pathologies such as vitreal macular traction and apiretal membrane. Hence, OCT is very important for treatment decision making. OCT is very important to measure hole size, as the narrowest site in the mid retina between the hole edges are used. Full thickness macular hole can be presented in several stages. Stage 1a, which is presented as elevation and disruption of the ellipsoid zone combined with vitreal macular traction. Stage 1b features a split of the outer and inner retinal layers, leaving only ILM attached with oblique anterior posterior vitreal macular traction. Stage 2 shows the full thickness renal defect with an attached operculum and may be accompanied by vitreal macular traction and sometimes there is no vitreal macular traction. However, full thickness macular hole stage 2 can be presented with variable sizes and can be associated with intraretinal cysts. Stage 3 which is presented with full thickness defect with a completely detached operculum and fofiocortical vitreous, but vitreous is still attached at the optic disc. Usually, the hole can be in variable sizes with elevated hole edges and cystic formation. Stage 4 features full thickness defect with a completely detached operculum and foveal cortical vitreous, but vitreous is detached at the optic disc, aka full posterior vitreous detachment, and usually the hole can be variable sizes with elevated hole edges and cystic formation. Stage 1 and 2 are usually presented with vitreal macular traction as shown in the previous slides. In contrast, stage 3 and 4 sometimes can be presented with epiretinal membrane. 
OCT is very important to assess the progression of a full thickness macular hole when monitoring the natural course of the macular hole in stage 1 and 2. The same OCT is essential to evaluate post-surgical success after repairing full thickness holes in stage 2, 3, and 4. Keep in mind that when a spontaneous release of the vitromacular traction occur, it is less likely to develop a full thickness macular hole, as in this case that shows posterior vitreous separation with residual cystic formation. The contralateral eye of this patient suffers from full thickness macular hole. This is a case shows macular hole stage 3 and was managed with pars plana vitrectomy with ILM peeling. The post-surgical cross-section shows closure of the macular hole. OCT can be useful in clinical practice to evaluate macular changes in cases of regmatogenous retinal detachment. OCT can accurately assess if the macula is attached or detached, along with the presence of vitro macular abnormalities such as a pyrital membrane, which may warrant a pyrital membrane and ILM peeling during surgery. In contrast, when there is a thinning in, of the retinal tissue in the center of the fovella, the ILM peeling may lead to a hydrogenic macular hole. In cases of regmatogenous retinal detachment associated with detached macula, the photoreceptor layer may present it with, with increased reflectivity and disruption, along with intraretinal cystic formation, which may feature a poor visual prognosis. OCT can assess vitropapillary abnormalities. In clinical examination, vitropapillary traction may appear as swallowing optic disc. Hence, OCT is very useful to diagnose vitropapillary traction, which shows persistent anterior-posterior vitropapillary traction with deformities of normal papillary anatomy. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this information useful in your daily clinical practice. Please stay tuned for the next presentation where I will discuss clinical application of OCT in cases of retinal vascular diseases.